warmer weather comes, some of the biggest predators to your pets come in little teeny packages. We're talking about fleas and ticks. Everyone needs to be protected against fleas and ticks, even indoor cats, because fleas and ticks can ride in on you, your other pets, and visitors. So today, I'll look at how to protect your pets against these teeny weeny insects with really big bites. It's always best to check with your veterinarian on what products are best for your specific pet. Your vet will likely recommend prescription preventatives like Frontline or Revolution that work to keep fleas and ticks off your pet and also kill them if they do latch on. Don't worry, it's a quick, easy application. Once a month, you just squeeze the liquid onto a spot that your pet can't reach to lick away. While these spot-on products kill fleas and ticks, some also have insect growth regulators that actually prevent flea eggs from hatching and maturing. Others, like Revolution, prevent other things, heartworm, and work on hook and roundworms, too. A word to the wise, always read the label and follow the directions closely, because some products meant for large dogs can overdose cats. A good indicator, the picture on the front will tell you who it's meant for. If you purchase over-the-counter compounds, be vigilant. Many contain pesticides. These can cause toxic reactions in sensitive cats. So watch your cat closely when using any over-the-counter products. If you notice your cat appearing drunk, experiencing muscle tremors, eventually seizuring, get him to the vet fast and take along the packaging so the vet knows what your cat is reacting to. And one more caution, don't go overboard. You don't need a flea dip plus a spray plus a flea collar. That's overkill. And actually, you could kill your cat with kindness. An easy way to get on schedule is to apply your flea and tick and also give them heartworm meds on the first of every month. Simply follow the directions. And if you have questions, your veterinarian is just a phone call away. This health tip is brought to you by the Nebraska Humane Society. I love to run, but I can't walk a straight line. It's because of my brain. It's been damaged. My previous owner left me unconscious. I still don't know what I did to make her so angry that night. Amazing people found me and gently nursed me back to health. They gave me my second chance. I once overheard a child ask if I'd walk straight again when I got to heaven. Maybe, but right now, I'm enjoying my little piece of heaven on earth. I couldn't remember what it meant to fetch, or to shake, or even to run. All I could do was lie down, held captive by my own matted fur, neglected, broken. Incredible people removed the filth and repaired my crippled body. They helped me look and feel and trust like a dog again. I remember someone whispering, we'll make it better. And after years of abuse, love did just that. So welcome to The Dish. Believe it or not, we are getting towards summer, and summertime is a busy time for kiddos, especially here at the Nebraska Humane Society. We have some fun summer camps for kids, and joining me now to talk a little bit more about that is our Director of Humane Education, Tammy Conroy. Tammy, thanks for stopping by. No problem. So um, we have summer camps for kids, and a lot of people don't know that we actually provide this service. So talk a little bit about the ages and what kids maybe can expect. Yeah, so we take in kids from ages six to nine for our morning sessions, mm -hmm. and that's called our junior session. We also take in 10 to 13 year old youth for our afternoon senior session. Um, and those are our campers. Then we utilize some camp counselors who are 15 years of age and older. So they come in and volunteer their time, help us out, get activities planned and ran. Um, some of those activities you can expect this summer are still those kennel buddies that we do. Um, and what is a kennel buddy? Yeah. So you get to pick out a dog from here at the shelter to sit and read to. Um, that dog is there throughout the week um, as long as they don't get adopted. Uh, if they do get adopted, we cheer you on and say, great job, campers. Uh, they pick a new kennel buddy to read to. We have books here of varying um, abilities for them to read. They also make kennel buddy signs for those dogs to kind of help get them adopted. So if a kennel buddy gets adopted, a kid probably feels pretty um, accomplished about the fact that, yay, my kennel buddy has a home. Yeah. I can go on to the next one. They get very excited. And we also do kennel buddy pictures so they can still remember that kennel buddy 
after they leave camp. So they get a picture to take home with them and their kennel buddy. Yeah. Awesome. I bet that's great. So camps are, let's talk about, they're day camps, right? Yes, ma'am. Half day sessions week long, correct? Correct. Morning sessions run from 9 a.m. to noon. Afternoon sessions run from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. And so it's, and, and I think that a lot of people think, oh my gosh, the Humane Society, it's, you know, it's full of animals, but there are a lot of other lessons that kids can learn as well. Yeah, we are actually working a lot with responsibility as well. We have critters that come into our camps um, and they help clean those cages, take care of them, socialize them. We help socialize some of the cats. Um, we also learn how to do enrichment for the animals and take that responsibility on us. Um, they help make stuffing of Kongs, veggie cubes for some of the dogs. Um, we've helped with treats for our horses here at the shelter. So lots of different opportunities for responsibility. And I think that that too then, um, because I've seen some of the campers who have come back and talked to us later who've said, oh my gosh, I went home and did this for my dog at home too. So I made a kibble buster out of egg cartons <laughs> or I stuffed a Kong for my dog and it actually works and keeps them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> better, better acting than a lot of times animals are. So it's a great way for kids to learn how to deal with their pets at home too, right? Correct. And another thing that they learn is about community pets. Nice. Um, one of the big things we do on Mondays is we learn how to safely meet and greet those dogs in the community. Do I run up to them? Is that unsafe? Um, do I ask a dog? Who do I ask? Right. How do I how do I get an animal or how do I greet an animal in public? Correct. Which is amazing. I know that the campers here a lot of times when they come up they'll um, they'll say if I've got a dog they'll say can I pet your dog and be like oh, yeah. perfect. Let's go ahead and see if we can't pet that dog the correct way. And we always appreciate people who ask that. So it's really nice to get that. Um, when we're um, talking about kiddos and in the shelter they get to see animals mm -hmm. and enjoy the animals here at the shelter um, in a very safe environment, right? Correct. Then also, though, we do some other stuff that's mm -hmm. sort of um, with, you know, what do I want to say, with, with supervision, mm -hmm. we've got some teachers and those folks who bring animals in, right? Yeah, we've got a lot of different staff from here at the shelter who this summer will be bringing in some of their critters and other animals that maybe youth haven't seen or haven't been exposed to. Um, last summer, they got to see a tarantula. We're hoping that that gets to come back. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Some different snakes um, came last summer, and I think they're on the schedule again. We have a sugar glider that's going to be coming this summer, nice. adopted from right here at the shelter. Um, and I believe a duck might be coming as well. Really? So we've got some staff who've adopted some pretty cool critters and they get to join us at camp. They learn about them, get to touch them, um, learn how to take care of them as well, just for some great experiences. It sounds like too that there's a variety. So kids that have different interests, it's not just dogs and cats and it's not just things that might be creepy crawly, but you get a chance to <laughs> to interact with a lot of those different types of animals. What if a kid says, absolutely not, I don't want to do this? We would definitely encourage them to take a chance on it, but if they are definitely too scared, we'll do it from a distance. <laughs> and we definitely don't want to scare our youth, and we want to give them those positive experiences, especially here at camp. I know that we've got um, some veterinarians who do some things as well yeah. for the kiddos. So our vets here at NHS come in and they share about their job here. Um, when we take our shelter scavenger hunt here and they're looking for cats and dog um, little cutouts throughout the shelter, once they find those, they get to go past our surgery unit and see kind of what we do back there as well. Um, our surgeons or veterinarians will tell about surgeries that they've done that week, um, maybe something kind of interesting. And then both junior and senior levels have a different aspect for being a junior vet. Our younger kids get to practice on some stuffed animals, mm -hmm. uh, bandaging, checking the temperature, heartbeats, all of that fun cool. stuff. Um, and we're hoping to get a dog in again this summer to check their heartbeat. The kids seemed to really enjoy that last summer. And then the senior level youth, they actually do a mock spay um, and practice wow. how to spay um, a stuffed dog. Wow. Well, that sounds very interesting. And yet also there are experiences with the live animals, too. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're not going to have them spay our live dogs. <laughs> Definitely <but>. not. <laughs> so um, I know that sometimes I see them outside as well. Are we going to be doing anything with 
outside as far as guest animals coming in or and I know that we're in kind of a state of flux at the shelter too because we will be undergoing a portion of our capital campaign which will redirect a lot of traffic and portions of the campus will be closed to people so I'm not sure I'm not sure if you have that all quite worked out yet or not <laughs> at this point we are utilizing a lot of shelter staff for speakers um, you kind of mentioned the construction. Mm -hmm. One of the big things will be a big change for returning campers is figuring out that drive through to drop off and pick up. We'll have a lot less parking for that. Um, at this point, I don't recall too many of our speakers coming in from okay. off-site right now. Gotcha. So we're going to do more really shelter-intensive mm -hmm. types of things, oh, yes. learning <laughs> about how animals act in the shelter, what happens. I know that with behavior, too, a lot of times they'll talk to kids about the shelter environment, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a little different than your home environment because of the stress levels that are involved for animals. Yeah, we have one of our behavior staff, Christina Ferency, is going to come to camp this summer um, as kind of a new uh, piece for camp cool. and share a little bit more about what she does with some of our more rowdy or more um, behavioral needing dogs and share what you can do in your own home and um, give them a new experience at camp. And obviously the trainers too are so fabulous because yeah. they definitely come in and help us with a lot of the different things that, um, what do I want to say, training a dog or giving tips for kids mm -hmm. on how to work with their animals at home. And we've got um, Kathy, our trainer, is coming in on Mondays and she's helping with that safe meeting greeting, bringing in some dogs for that and appropriate ways to meet them. So trying to think of what else we might have going on. I know, it's just kind of, there's a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> so for kids that might want to be camp counselors, what is the opportunity like? So we are, we have probably about a week left that we'll keep open the counselor apps, um, and then we'll be closing those offline. Um, if they go onto our website, www.nehumanesociety.org, they can look for Camp Kindness. It's on the same page as our camp applications. Okay. There's a counselor app fill that out and we'll kind of read through that and if they're accepted to be a counselor they can pick a week we ask for a week commitment um, they come to camp they get one of our cool camp shirts oh, I brand about the shirts. new I need this to talk year about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have them help out with a small group of kiddos and we have them based um, by color groups so each group that they are in charge of has a different color t-shirt on so they can know who's in their group the kids can really get to know each other as well very nice. So the, I wanted to talk about yeah. this because we actually, um, this is a great idea. Tell me about the camp shirt this year. Yeah, so it, we felt it was time last year to come up with a new design. So we held a contest at Camp Kindness last summer. Every camper that participated was welcome to join in. They were given opportunity and time to create a camp shirt. At the end of the summer, our camp counselors actually were the deciding voters, and they picked four campers' designs. They had no idea who made them, and they put them together. So one young girl made the cute little paw prints. Mm -hmm. um, another camper made this awesome design of the cat and dog with the heart leash. Oh my gosh, super cute. And then two campers actually wrote this little saying up here, Nebraska Humane Society loving animals since 1875, nice. which is when we opened our shelter doors. Well, I love it. Kids have a chance to then also, you know, participate and give us artwork and, and moniker the camp, if you will. They get to learn about the sheltering um, aspect, animals. It's a ton of fun. Again, it's a week-long half-day session yep. for campers, ages... 6 to 9 and 10 to 13. And it goes June and July, right? Yep, we are skipping that first week of June, and then we're also obviously skipping the 4th of July week, right. so there's seven weeks total. Okay. Well, it sounds like tons of fun for everybody. I know it always is. I love seeing the campers here. They infuse us with a whole lot of energy here at the shelter. And this year it'll be fun because they'll have a whole new route to go through and different <laughs> aspects of the shelter to see. So good luck with that. <laughs> I know we're rerouting everything, but it should be a lot of fun for kiddos. So, Well, Cam, Tammy, thanks so much for coming and talking to us today about Camp Kindness. Hopefully, if people need more information, they can find info on our website, mm -hmm. nehumanesociety.org. You can, I think there's going to be a camp moniker right up at the top, or if you go to, um, you can find it under youth programs. So, yeah, great. Well, thanks so much. Good luck. Have a great summer. Thanks, Pam. And we will be back shortly. I love to run, but I can't walk a straight line. It's because of my brain. It's been damaged. My previous owner left me unconscious. I still don't know what I did to make her so angry that night. 
Amazing people found me and gently nursed me back to health. They gave me my second chance. I once overheard a child ask if I'd walk straight again when I got to heaven. Maybe, but right now, I'm enjoying my little piece of heaven on earth. I couldn't remember what it meant to fetch, or to shake, or even to run. All I could do was lie down, held captive by my own matted fur, neglected, broken. Incredible people removed the filth and repaired my crippled body. They helped me look and feel and trust like a dog again. I remember someone whispering, we'll make it better. And after years of abuse, love did just that. Another one of the classes that will come back again now that the weather is nice is the loose leash walking class. And basically what we're gonna work on, and we do it all here on campus, but there's a lot of outside work with it. Because if you don't ever practice outside, how does your dog get better? They get really good inside, which is what we've done a lot of practice on in the winter. But outside is tough, because there are smells and sights and sounds and all those kinds of things. So we work on all kinds of different tricks to help you learn to not only get a nice loose leash from your dog, but to walk so you watch where you're going. We have a tendency to want to watch, walk with our head down with our dog and that the dogs figure that out, number one. But number two, it's a great way for us to crash or trip. Um, so one of the games that they play is they'll take a spoon with an egg, a plastic egg, plastic Easter egg. They have to hold it in one hand, the leash in the other hand, and they can't cheat and put their thumb on the egg. That's cheating. If it drops while they're walking, they have to stop get a sit from their dog and pick the egg up and start over again. Now, I don't know what Annie will know because she's never done this, but the other trick is that they have to keep the leash right next to themselves, keep it at a definite distance, and they're gonna move. If it gets tight, they stop, nice. And they'll back up a little bit, turn around, and away we go. But again, the egg has to stay on the spoon. They'll also do it with a bag of treats. They'll have their hand on a bag of treats and of course the dog would rather have that and jump at that. Uh, but it's great for owners, we owners, as we need to practice that too and pay attention to what all of us is doing, not just our dog. And there's gonna be all kinds of different ways to do that. And around here we have out in the meadow, we've got the creek. So there's lots of sights and sounds and smells and other animals, um, sidewalk to walk on, grass to walk on. It makes a difference for dogs so they learn how to behave in all those places. But it's a fun class, loose leash walking. I love to run, but I can't walk a straight line. It's because of my brain. It's been damaged. My previous owner left me unconscious. I still don't know what I did to make her so angry that night. Amazing people found me and gently nursed me back to health. They gave me my second chance. I once overheard a child ask if I'd walk straight again when I got to heaven. Maybe, but right now, I'm enjoying my little piece of heaven on earth. I couldn't remember what it meant to fetch, or to shake, or even to run. All I could do was lie down, held captive by my own matted fur, neglected, broken. Incredible people removed the filth and repaired my crippled body. They helped me look and feel and trust like a dog again. I remember someone whispering, we'll make it better. And after years of abuse, love did just that. So this is two-year-old Bolt. Bolt is an American Eskimo. Will you sit, please? Sit. Who is, as you can see, very highly food motivated. One of the sad things about Bolt's food motivation is that he is on thyroid medication. So he's got a thyroid issue, and he's going to be on those meds for the rest of his life. Um, and so he gets really hungry, and he gets really territorial about his food. For that reason, he needs to go to an adult-only home because if he's being fed and he is, his medications start ebbing, he can be very guardy and possessive about his food. Sit down, Bolt, there you go. Will you sit? Will you sit, please? He's a good guy, he wants to be a really good dog, but unfortunately that medical issue makes him very hungry and very guardy about his food. So, um, other than that though, 
He's a great guy. He's a lot of fun. Oh, will you come here? Well, will you come here? I know you think now that I have all the treats in the world, don't I? But you can see he's got some issues with thyroid, so he's got some some um, hair that's this is this is due to thyroid meds and not being on them. Um, or not, not um, having the appropriate medication. He's back on his meds now. He's doing really well. I know, I know you want to wipe your face on me, don't you? He's a big cuddle bum. He loves treats. He loves attention and affection from people. But he also, again, has a little bit of a medical issue. So he needs to go to an adult-only home. He probably needs to go um, to a home that is maybe used to dogs that need to be left alone when eating. Um, but he's a great guy, he's just two years old, he's a ton of fun, he'll be fun to take out to the park and on walks because he's a great size, he's great on leash, he's potty trained, um, so he's, a, he's gonna be a great dog for someone, I know, I know, if they're comfortable handling that medical issue. And that, I know, what are you doing you Goomba, are you scratching on me, is the lovely and talented Bolt. So this is Lady. Lady is a, a full breed pit bull, so she would have to wear a muzzle, I know, and also she would um, need to comply by the breed specific uh, regulations if she's in Omaha. She's three years old, come here. I know, we're gonna start playing, aren't we? Wee! So she can be a little timid with new people, but when she's not and she's comfortable, which apparently she is right now, she starts having some fun and wanting to play, Lady. Hey, Pumpkin, will you sit down, please? I have treats, will you sit? Come here, sweetie. Will you sit down? Oh my goodness, will you sit? Oh, that's very good. She um, probably needs to go to an adult-only home. She um, was in a home where discipline was a little rough with her, and so um, she probably needs a more patient home to give her a chance to get to know people, and then to, um, make sure that everybody is giving positive reinforcement instead of negative reinforcement. That said, hey Chiquita, she is a good girl. She's very gentle taking treats. She's a little, like I said, timid with meeting new people. But once she gets to know you, she likes to play and be a little rowdy. And at this weight, she could knock over kids. So we have her as adult only home. Um, you'll probably wanna make sure that, that you're um, you're, you're, you're ready for the breed specific uh, legislation if you live in the Omaha area. I know, I know. But she's a super sweetheart. Pretty gentle, just wants to hang out with you and have some fun. And that is three year old lady. I love to run, but I can't walk a straight line. It's because of my brain. It's been damaged. My previous owner left me unconscious. I still don't know what I did to make her so angry that night. Amazing people found me and gently nursed me back to health. They gave me my second chance. I once overheard a child ask if I'd walk straight again when I got to heaven. Maybe, but right now, I'm enjoying my little piece of heaven on earth. I couldn't remember what it meant to fetch, or to shake, or even to run. All I could do was lie down, held captive by my own matted fur, neglected, broken. Incredible people removed the filth and repaired my crippled body. They helped me look and feel and trust like a dog again. I remember someone whispering, we'll make it better. And after years of abuse, love did just that. Thanks for joining us for The Dish. We'll have a new show once every two weeks that'll bring you more training tips and pet health tips, information about events that are going on at the shelter, and things that you as a pet owner can use. So for now, goodbye, but thanks for joining us and have a great week.